Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for taking your time to be with us today in our third lesson of the course on the fundamentals of organizing and writing academic research papers. I hope all of you are doing well today. So as we move into our, our lesson today, just to recap, this session is being recorded and all your mics have been muted currently. So uh, at the end of the session, if you have any question, please raise your electronic arms and I will unmute you, or you can continue to post your question in the chat box. Just to recap, uh, the main aim of this workshop, uh, as you all are aware by now, is uh, to, to give you a quick overview of the fundamentals of of organizing and writing a good quality academic research paper. So this session is open to, to the general public, to the academic staff, to the students, and or to anyone who is keen to write an academic paper. When I say academic paper, what we mean here is uh, papers that can contribute to journal articles, book chapters, conference paper, or any other publication that is required uh, in the academia. So this session will actually guide you in step-by-step -step approach uh, in taking you through to the whole uh, structure of a, a paper. So this session can also be used for those who are teaching uh, academic writing and uh, part of this presentation can be used if you want to use it for your uh, classes. So we have done the first two lessons uh, over the last uh, few weeks, choosing a topic and preparing to write. Today's session is going to be focused on writing your research abstract. So for our session, uh, we have uh, three of us who will be facilitating the session. The first session, first part of the session will be uh, carried out by Professor Dr. Brian Imri, who is the CEO of District College Penang and also an adjunct professor of the Wawasan Open University. Uh, I will handle the second part of the presentation. I am currently the president of this college and also the adjunct professor at Wawasan Open University. And then the last part, uh, we will have our chief librarian, Ms. Pairo Nizan Akbar Malik, who will actually take you through the support that we have from the library uh, for you to carry out the lesson that we are carrying out today. So for the session today, our focus is uh, to look at writing the abstract. So there are three, eight, three main areas that we're going to be focused on. The first part is, uh, is very much to look at how do you, what is the importance of a good abstract and what is the difference when you talk about writing an abstract and writing an executive summary. So Prof. Ryan Imbri will actually take you through that. I will then, uh, following Prof. Ryan presentation, I will guide you on how to structure and write a good abstract and then how do you come up with your keywords that is required in, in most abstracts? And then the last portion will be the support from the library. So without further ado, let me now invite uh, Prof. Brian Imri uh, to take you through in the first part of the presentation today. Over to you, Brian. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you, Prof. Vic. Um, yes, so um, I'm just, just going to take you through, as Prof. Vic outlined, uh, the various type, or well, the purpose of an abstract, the various types of abstract there are, and then how that contrasts with uh, doing an executive summary, which some of you might be aware of. Okay, uh, next slide. Okay, so uh, this here summarizes the, uh, the definition of an abstract, but it's a short, an underlying short and concise summary. Okay, you, you may have a you may be tempted to tell everything, okay? Um, you don't have to tell the whole story, okay? But, the, but depending on the type of abstract, which we'll get to, it will uh, determine um, the type of, um, well, the type of outlet uh, will determine somewhat your choice of which type of abstract uh, that you, you, you need to employ and uh, the type of abstract will determine the scope and the length, okay? But usually uh, um, abstracts are in, in the range of 150 to 250 words in length. And, uh, and they will go through various aspects of your research the paper that you're writing on, right? So uh, they, will, they will cover the overall purpose of the study and research, the basic design, um, often, but not always the major findings and, uh, and give a brief summary interpretations and conclusions. 
All right, uh, next slide. Okay, so it's important because you, like me, don't have time. All right, so, so it, it, it's important that it, uh, it summarizes the key aspects and usually the methodology that's been employed. So if you're able to make a judgment, is this, uh, is this particular research paper worth reading in more detail? All right. Um, and uh, you usually come across, in terms of search engines, they also often focus in on the title and the abstract in particular when they're actually generating the whole list of papers that, that, that are going to be reviewed by other people. All right. Now, as a researcher, you should have a, a, a goal to be highly cited. Uh, in other words, to have other people read and reference your work um, as knowledge evolves, right? But, um, but the, so, so they're the first to be read, but as a writer, they're usually, usually the last to be written, okay? You may, however, okay, uh, as is highlighted in the second point, um, write a rough abstract as a means of guiding your, your paper, as a, as a structure to your paper as it, as it evolves. You, you can take that approach. Personally, I prefer to write um, the abstract last. And I think that's, that's quite a common approach. Um, the, 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 the abstract um, will identify problems and issues. Um, so up front, it, it helps the editors and reviewers decide whether um, they're even interested. So not just the end author, but when you're submitting to a journal or a conference, uh, it's just going to, to a, a set of blind reviewers, it sets the scene. If you don't have a good abstract, you won't get past that first line of, of review. So it's really important you consider carefully our previous discussions in terms of the choice of title for your research, but also um, uh, write carefully your abstract whether you write it at the end or the beginning of the process. Um, okay. Um, and as I said, often researchers don't actually read the whole article. Okay. They, uh, they, they cite, um, unfortunately, based solely upon the abstract. Not a good practice. I don't encourage it, but that's often how it works uh, with, with busy researchers. Next uh, slide, please. Right, so there, there are four main types of abstracts, critical abstract, dis descriptive abstract, informative abstract, and highlight abstract. Um, and they're there in length, as you'll see as we go through. So, so the critical abstract, around about four to 500 words in length, is, um, includes an adjudgment or comment list on, the, on the study's validity, reliability, okay? So uh, uh, validity in terms of, is it the right measure, okay, of what's being, or right test of what's being tested. Reliability, the number of tests, uh, research tests that can be uh, employed to demonstrate that. And um, the limits or the completeness um, of uh, the study. It includes a comparison of major works, all right, not all works, because you're only doing four to 500 words, all right. The descriptive abstract um, is a lot shorter, usually about 100 words in length. Uh, including indicates the uh, type of information to be found in the publication. So it goes through the structure. Um, it doesn't normally this is, um, give you the results. It's meant more as a teaser, right? So they actually, it, it does tell you what it's trying, to, its research objectives are, its structure. It may, it may even mention and cite key works that it builds upon. And it may even indicate broadly the methodology, but doesn't actually give the outcome of the results or conclusions. Informative um, abstract is a usually a little bit longer than the descriptive abstract and is the one which is most commonly used, which is really a mixture of the other two above. It, and includes the main arguments, including reference to key papers, key research, and the results and evidence, okay, which demonstrate, um, uh, you know, with a high degree of, uh, assertiveness, I guess, um, how you came to that conclusion. And I said, it's, it's around about 300 words. So, so most of you will be doing that. The last one here is not really an abstract, uh, in my view. It's more like a, a few sentences in length, normally very short. Um, and it's, it can't, cannot really be claimed to be stand independent of the article. You can't really 
look at this, it's a very uh, surface level summary of what's, of what's contained therein. Okay, next slide. Now, many of you, particularly if you've come from the humanities and social sciences, will be familiar with, an, with writing a report and it's common practice um, to write an executive summary. Now, executive summaries um, usually, well, the, pur the purpose, there are some similarities, okay, and it's purposed with providing um, a summary of the content for busy executive, bus busy business people. However, um, uh, usually they're designed such that you could, as, um, as a reader, okay, um, get a very high level grasp of um, the outcomes without actually reading the full content, all right? So it's designed more as, okay, this is, this is everything that's covered in the paper. And if you want to have further detail, you could go through that respective section in the report, all right? Um, so so it's, a, it's a more like a, a mini paper in a way. Usually in, in, uh, there's, there's some paragraphs with some bullet points uh, supporting it, but it does give um, um, the, uh, the scope, the method, and the conclusion, and how the, uh, and the, and the, you know, the methodology behind the conclusions. And that's it. The next slide. Okay, the importance of a good abstract. So you may be asking, oh, how do I know I've written enough or, or <coughs> included enough in my abstract? Uh, I think the general rule of thumb is to imagine that you are <coughs> standing in someone else's shoes. <coughs> Excuse me. And then ask two or three questions, or two questions. <coughs> um, if your abstract was the only part of the paper that they could access, and that may be the case if, you, if they haven't got uh, a comprehensive uh, database like we have in our library, okay, would you be happy with the amount of information presented there? All right, in other, other words, <coughs> is there sufficient information in the abstract for them to cite you? <coughs> I'm having a coughing fit. Okay, and then secondly, does it tell the whole story about the study? Okay, that's, um, so, so it needs to, in my view, an abstract needs to have sufficient <coughs> information that goes through the scope, uh, the method, including, including the sample size of the quantitative um, study and, and, and the means of analysis, and then, and then uh, look at the conclusion, all right? Um, it, 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 to me, uh, that's already important if I'm, a, if I'm only going to have access to um, uh, an abstract. If the answer is no, okay, to either of these questions, either or both these questions, then likely you have to revise it. Just underpinning the point that we made towards the beginning of the next session, a well-written abstract can be the most important paragraph in your article because it may be the only thing that people actually read, right? Um, while I may mention that uh, we have a number of databases in the library, we don't have every database. So I'm sure you as a researcher, you will, will have, or you will in the future, um, search online, like Google Scholar, for example, and come across articles that you wish you could have access to. And uh, Nizan and her team can certainly do their best to give you access. But sometimes they are, you know, they can be actually, you know, a hundred US dollars sometimes right now, okay? Um, so sometimes you have to rely on the comprehensiveness of an abstract. Thus, I think you should hear on, on the side of a more comprehensive abstract. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Brian, for starting us off for the beginning part of the abstract writing. So now the second part of the uh, session today, I will take you through on structuring and also writing uh, the abstract. So at the end of the session, I hope you'll be able to structure a good research abstract. So as what uh, uh, Prof. Brian have mentioned, an abstract is actually basically an independent uh, self-contained text, okay? So by just reading an abstract, you should be able to get sufficient information of what the research paper is all about. 
case. So it is not an excerpt copy from the paper or dissertation. Okay, it is not. You are not. It is not a copy and paste from different section of the paper. But what you are basically doing is you are trying to summarize the whole contents. So writing your abstract uh, using concise but complete sentences is key. So get to the point quickly and use a, a non-evaluative language uh, to report on the contents of the paper. When I say non-evaluative language here is the feedback that uh, does not assign uh, any value okay, to any action. It, it just acknowledges the action or, or feelings of the people. So non-evaluative uh, feedback can be as simple as, as, uh, as saying thank you for your input or or that's an interesting way of looking at things. So you, you try to be a bit more generic in the abstract with, without putting in very much uh, details. And then next, using uh, the active voices when possible. Uh, we have the, the tendency of writing in passive voices. Okay, when I say active here, is the active voice uh, will normally uh, emphasizes the person or the, the agent who is performing an action. So in other words, the, the subject performs the action, whereas in passive words, when you write in passive words, the passive voices uh, normally emphasizes the recipient of the action. So a clear example, let's say if you have a sentence like uh, the passive, if you write it in a passive voice, the research was approved by the research board of district college. So that is in passive voice. But how you should be writing in a, in a research is in an active voice. The research board of district college approved the research. So that is how you convert from a passive voice to active voice. I'm sure whenever you have written uh, using Microsoft Word, uh, sometimes you'll see an error message appearing. Okay. And they say, oh, this is written in passive voice. That's what basically they mean. Always use the past, uh, past tense because you are reporting on research uh, that has been uh, completed. So to begin uh, composing your abstract, uh, take the whole sentences or key phrases from each section and then put them in sequence that summarize the paper first. Okay, so that is your first step you do. Why you're doing that is not because you're copy and pasting, but you want to ensure that you have the sequence put correctly. Okay, then you have to revise uh, the, the way how you write to introduce the particular section of the paper. So the... So you need to revise with, with good connecting phrases or words to make it uh, cohesive and clear. So before uh, handing in your final paper, check to make sure that uh, the information uh, in the abstract uh, is accurately reflecting the actual paper and the contents of what you have written in the paper. So this is key for you. So abstract, as I've said, uh, is it's a summary. So it is not an introduction. So some people write an abstract like an introduction of the research. It is not an introduction of the research. So avoid introducing your topic. Okay, leave that for the introduction chapter. We will do that in our in our next session when we talk about introduction. So avoid statements like "we hope to prove." Be, okay, you cannot be very generic. It has to be very clear what you intend to do or what you intend to achieve in the study. So don't be very vague. So abstract is not the essay outline, you don't give an outline of what is uh, in the paper. So it's okay, chapter one will be covering this, second, second chapter will be covering, this. it's not. So it's not the purpose of an abstract. So data is, when you have a data, be careful what data you're presenting, okay? Data, the full data is for the results section. So do not refer to other literature within the abstract, okay? Because it is, a, remember, it's a standalone document standalone part of the document. So say something like, if you're using some other research, the current research shows that our studies have indicated, but don't refer to a particular study because the moment you do that, then you have to start citing it. You cannot include uh, quotations which, needed, uh, which needs uh, footnotes or citation in the abstract. You try to avoid uh, abbreviations or symbols or any acronym because this may become problematic, especially when it is going to be indexed, okay? So, so when your paper is going to be indexed, if it's incomplete, your document will never pop out in any of the indexes. So do not include all this abbreviation. Uh, do not include footnotes or citations or references to other literature, okay? And also include 
uh, as many keywords as possible. So depending on the journal, if some journal says that only six index uh, keywords is allowed, then you have six, some they allow more than that. So this abstract, the words you see in the title, the abstract and the keywords all are key when you're locating the paper in any databases. I'm sure uh, Ms. Pairo Niza will, will cover that later when we talk about how do you find the correct article using the abstract. So let's now quickly look at one example of an abstract and try to learn from it how, on the different areas of writing an abstract that uh, Prof. Ryan mentioned right at the beginning. So if you look here, this is an example of uh, part of the abstract here. You can start by clearly uh, defining uh, the purpose and aim of your research. Uh, what practical or theoretical problem uh, does the research uh, respond to? Or, or what research question did you aim to answer? So all this information can actually be part of the uh, research uh, abstract. You can also include some brief context on the social or academic relevance of your topic that is being written. But don't get into too detailed background information. Remember, your aim is not to provide so much of information. It's just a teaser for people to read, but sufficient information must be there. After identifying the problem, state the objectives of the research. Okay, You can use verbs like uh, investigate, to investigate, to test, analyze, or, or evaluate, to describe exactly what you, you, are, you are trying to do in this publication. Also remember that this part of the abstract can also be written in present or past tense. You should never uh, refer to the future tense as the research is already completed when you have when you are writing an abstract. So if you look at uh, the next part of the abstract, you, you need to indicate the research method that you are using to answer the research Question. So this part uh, should be a straightforward description of what you did in one or two sentences, not more than that. It, it is also written uh, usually in the past tense as uh, it is referred to a completed action, okay? Because this study has been completed. Next, the sum, next you need to summarize the main research result. So this part of the abstract can be in the present or past tense depending on how long or complex your research is, you may not be able to include all the results here. So try to highlight only the most uh, important things uh, that will allow the reader to understand uh, the conclusion. Finally, the, the end part of your abstract, state the main conclusion of your research. What is the answer to the problem or, or question that you intended to answer in this study. The reader should finish with a clear understanding of the central uh, point that your research has, has proved or argued, okay? You can also, sometimes you can include some further research uh, within part of the abstract. Uh, so conclusions are usually uh, written in the present tense. So if there are important limitations to your research, uh, for example, related to sample size or method, you should mention them briefly in the abstract. This allow readers uh, to assess the credibility and uh, generalizability of your research. Okay, so when you put all these uh, different sections together, so you will get a complete abstract. So these are all the one I've color coded here is the different areas, different things that I mentioned to you right from the aim and objective research questions to the methodology to the results and to the conclusion so that gives you a complete abstract so in most abstracts as I've said at the beginning you also need to include suitable keywords if your paper will be published uh, you might have to add uh, a list of keywords at the end of the abstract so these keywords should uh, reference the most uh, important elements of the research to help potential readers uh, to find your paper in their own uh, literature research. So be aware that some publications, uh, manuals such as the APA style, have specific formatting requirement uh, as far as a keyword is concerned. So the instruction for authors will state normally uh, how many keywords are required. So always read the guidelines that is provided for every 
publication. So choosing uh, appropriate keywords uh, is important because these are used for uh, indexing purpose. The well-chosen keywords will enable your manuscript to be more uh, easily identified and also cited. So some journals uh, require that the keywords be included in the title of the paper, whereas others say that uh, uh, keywords uh, should not appear in the title and that they should rather complement the title. Okay, so always check your target uh, journal's instruction for author. So that will help you to ensure that uh, the, the abstract and the keywords is complementing one another together with the title so that you are able to locate the publications without even reading the whole uh, publication. Some journals have also uh, requested structured abstract, okay, divided into uh, different sections, okay, such as the background, objective, methods, results, and conclusion. So always check your target journal's instruction for, for authors uh, to determine the particular formatting or outline requirement prior to uh, writing the abstract. Okay, so, so when they have a structured approach, it may be much easier to write the abstract because you are well guided. But if there's no structure given, you can use the same structure to write a one paragraph abstract. Okay, it's still similar. So to so look out for the journals, normally uh, there are some journals, uh, especially uh, those journals under Emerald, you will realize that they're always uh, well structured. And then lastly, um, you need to proofread and revise the abstract that you have written. Make sure to check the guidelines to ensure the formatting is correct. Remember, uh, the reader should know exactly what the paper is uh, about after reading the abstract. So before you submit the, the, the piece of uh, hard work that you have been working on for months, uh, try to consider using a professional proofreading service to get rid of uh, language errors, check your structure and improve your academic style. So proofreading and revising the paper is key. No matter how many times you do it, uh, uh, when you look at your own articles again and again, you will never realize the error that you have made. So you always need a second person to look at it, a fresh eye to look at it, and they will find something. So, so that is basically how you structure a simple abstract. So now I'm going to hand over to Ms. Faironiza, who will take you through the library support in terms of how do you locate a good abstract and how the abstract can be used uh, or to find credible uh, articles. Over to you, Ms. Faironiza. Okay, thank you, Prabhi. Good afternoon, everyone. For today's session, as mentioned, I will share with you on how to identify credible and relevant resources for your research paper by reading the abstract using the databases. I will be using examples from EBSCO, Discovery, and also Google Scholar search engine. From the search result, you can look up the online databases to find out what articles have appeared on a given topic. Search engines use abstract as well as the title to identify key terms for indexing the published paper. And as mentioned by Prof. Brian and Prof. Rick, the abstract provide a concise summary of the research. So therefore, reading the abstract can be a good way to determine whether the article is suitable for your needs. Next slide, please. Okay, the example on display is the search results from uh, the keyword that I use it, uh, is emotional intelligence by using Expo Discovery Search Engine available here at the end of the digital library. Most of the record listed in the search result will let you know if an extract is available. If not, you can click on the title to check the detailed record. In the databases, you can find the citation information for an article on the article record page. Each database display will be different. Uh, in some databases, you can click extract and abstract or detail link in the search results. And in some databases, you can click on the article title in the result list. 
if the library have subscription to the journal, the article should be easily uh, accessible because it will appear as a link, as a full text link to the journal, or it will uh, refer you to the journal publisher page where you can get the article. If not, you can uh, contact the library. Next slide, please. Okay, this is when uh, you click on the uh, title of the uh, results, search results, and then you will get the detailed record. Okay, the detailed record will be displayed and it will also include a summary or extract. The author and subject terms of the record will appear as links and then you can perform a search on that particular field. And then the subject list will be available and uh, normally you will list out the most relevant subject to that particular item, article. So you can also find similar results by searching the article subject headings or descriptor. All this will be depending on the type of databases that you are using. So sometimes it will be listed at the side, sometimes it will be listed at the bottom. The next slide please. Okay, this is an example from Google Scholar search engine. The Google Scholar search engine covers journals, conference paper, thesis, and dissertation, academic books, extract technical reports, and other scholarly literature from uh, all broads of areas of research from variety of academic publisher, professional society, and university repository. So it's a good uh, search engine to use when you want to search for uh, research articles. Okay, they will also include uh, both free and subscription sources. For each search result, uh, you will find a version of the article that you can read. These access links are labeled as PDF or HTML and appear to the right of the search result. So we also provide you related articles. You can click on the related articles under the search result to explore similar articles about the topic. And you can also click all version under the search results and check out the alternative sources for you to access the full article. Next slide, please. Okay, this is another example from uh, Google Scholar Search Engine Search Results. So as mentioned earlier from the search result, you can click on related articles where all cited by to see closely related works or search or you can click on the author's name and see what else they have written about the same topic or about other similar topics. Okay, you can click on the title to read the preview, summary, and extract. A link labeled PDF HTML to the right of the search result will show if the full text article is available. So if it's available, you just click on it and you will be direct to the database or to the site where the full article is available. Next slide, please. Okay, this is an example of an abstract from one of the citation record from the search results. So I have circle at the bottom, okay, uh, a display record, a DOI or digital object identifier. It's a string of numbers, letters, and symbol used to uniquely identify an article or document and to provide it with a permanent web address. A DOI will help you easily locate the document from the citation. So it will always refer to that uh, particular article, even though the, uh, the web address has changed, but the DOI will always be the same. So it's another way to detect the uh, full text of the article. Next slide, please. Okay, this is a, another example of an extract available from the citation record on Google Scholar search results. So after reading the extract, you will be able to determine whether the article is suitable for your needs. Then you can go to the full text of the article uh, through the link available, and then you can use it for your topic. So sometimes, you know, uh, the full text is not available. You can always contact the library and um, we will try our best to get you the full article if it's accessible. Okay, next slide please. Okay, this is, uh, we have listed the online resources and web pages for lesson three 
writing the extract. So you can click on the link to access the information. So thank you very much. That's it for me. I'll pass it back to uh, Profit. Thank you, Paruniza, for giving us a very good uh, 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 briefing on how we can use uh, the library uh, databases to locate the, the information, especially the abstract. Okay, so now I shall open the session to uh, for questions. Uh, I don't see any question in the chat. So we have about 35 of you here. I'm sure many of you are working on some form of research and, and writing an abstract is key for you. So is there any question? Uh, you can raise your hand and I can unmute you to ask the question directly to us. Or you can even uh, put it in the chat. Anyone still doubtful of how to write uh, an effective abstract? Sometimes I'm sure when all of us are invited uh, to speak in, in conferences or submit a conference paper, the tendency is we tend to write the abstract first. Okay, it's okay. I need to get it accepted first. Once the paper is accepted, then you tend to work on the research. So, of course, uh, so that is why uh, uh, when, we, when Prof. Brian mentioned earlier, the tendency is sometimes you tend to write it first and then you do the then get it accepted and then you work on the on the research and then you start modifying it and making sure the abstract really ties back with your paper but then in the real approach should be the research should have been conducted way before the conference but if you're working uh, on on certain publication uh, where it is very uh, literature driven rather than uh, and doing the actual uh, field research then the tendency is we tend to write the short abstract, submit to the conference organizer, and then they do the review, they give their comments, and then they respond to you, say, okay, your paper has been accepted with all the following comments adopted. Then you start doing the actual paper and re submit right. the full paper. Yeah, so that is one. By the way, just probably if I want to jump in, I, I agree, you just yeah. triggered something in my mind um, uh, on, two, on two fronts. You are quite right. Um, you should write the paper first before the abstract in most cases. Um, if you rush too quickly to write the abstract so to get acceptance based upon an abstract, then write the paper, you can sometimes get stuck. I've got stuck, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> you can get some, you basically realize, oh, what I wrote in the abstract is wrong. Yes. Or you interpret the literature, or it's not the latest literature or something. So, so not the best, but sometimes you're forced through circumstances to do that. And then also, um, there's something for conference papers in particular called extended abstracts. We didn't cover yes. that, but yes. an extended abstract is normally what, three pages, yeah. four pages long, something like that. Yes. It's like a very short paper, really. Yeah. It's, it's not, it's, it's like, a, seriously, it's like a condensed paper. Right? Yeah, so not, normally an extended abstract, you will also include uh, your reference list, okay? Mm. The reference list used in the extended abstract, not the full extended abstract. And uh, extended abstract is more effective for for review of the paper because uh, sometimes when you just send an abstract paper, the organizer have to decide, is this paper good enough for the conference? And it's so difficult with the 150, 200 words, you cannot evaluate how good is the paper. So sometimes most conferences now require you to send an extended abstract about two to three pages long where uh, you are able to extend a lot of details so the organizer can actually determine the quality of the paper. And so that's, that is why extended abstract is, it's a, it's a similar approach, but it's similar to uh, like writing an executive summary, but with more information, more concise information about the research. They were not, they were, in that case, they would normally give you a, a maximum length, you'd be prescribed yeah. a maximum length. Yeah. Okay. Any, any questions from everyone, anyone? I see everyone is very quiet. Anybody have any difficulties in writing an abstract? Nope, okay, all right. So uh, so this session, as I've said, has been recorded. Uh, you have registered yourself. So we will give you a set of the presentation and the recording today. So if anytime you have any question, please feel free to, to contact three of us, okay? So until we see you in the next session on introduction, two weeks time, Stay safe and we'll see you again. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.